Hey, welcome back to the bench. So, um, a couple of months back I picked up a pack of dead laptop batteries and out of those I've uh, extracted most of these. Um, now I've got the daunting task of actually uh, going through them and categorizing them. So far I've managed only this many. Um, starting at 1400 milliamp hours all the way up to 2200 um, hopefully I want to fill this entire thing and create a, uh, a power supply for my bench uh, I do have a Rigol uh, DP832 down here but this thing's really loud for when you're filming it's not great um, batteries much quieter so Oh, let's get rid of these. Ugh. I posted on Instagram the other day a picture of this monstrosity. This is my charge and discharge test board. Uh, over here I can charge four batteries at the same time. Uh, each individually on their own so that they don't overcharge and then I have four slots for discharge I have this whopping great big uh, cooler from I think from an old uh, style AMD uh, CPU but uh, it's now cooling a number of resistors which are currently wedged in place with a bit of paper that's uh, Probably not the best thing to be using next to hot resistors. Uh, and we have some uh, FETs down this side for turning it on and off. Um, and then over here we have some current sensing uh, ICs. And then finally an Arduino on the end for recording this. Um, it's sort of working. Um, I've got through three, six, nine, twelve batteries so far in a couple of days of uh, testing, um, but it's starting to cause a few problems. So at the moment, charging these two wires connect onto my uh, my power supply and uh, I charge it from there. But that power supply again, it, it's super loud. So uh, what I do have knocking around, so the first thing I want to do today is sort out charging without having to use my bench power supply. So I've got this, which is a 3 amp, 12 volt DC power supply. Um, seems to work fine I'm not fully sure that it does give the full 3 amps but it gives enough um, and to that I'm going to need to regulate that down to 5 volts so rummaging through the parts bin I have one of these uh, constant current constant voltage uh, buck converters um, and a I think this is a 2.1 millimeter jack I can't remember jack to fit on the end of here and that should be it so I'm gonna wire this together and get some batteries charging okay so we've, uh, we've got the power pack plugged into this board let's get this uh, plugged into the mains power boards come on and now the first thing I want to do is uh, check that the voltage on this is 5 volts so let's get this on volts uh, right there we go bit of a dicky connection so 5.14 that's not too bad let's just trim that down slightly using the voltage pot a 
that'll do 5.1 and now I need to switch to 10 amp range and see how much current so it's currently set to 3 amps that will actually do okay so down here we've got these TP4056 boards that are everywhere on eBay um, these will charge lithium ion packs uh, single cells and these are all wired in parallel into this uh, now buck converter which is dropping the 12 volts from our mains pack and also limiting us to uh, 3 amps across these boards that this should be able to do 4 amps these are all configured for 1 amp charging but this pack uh, is only rated for 3 this board is rated for 5 but I'm not sure about the uh, the cooling after 3 amps so we'll, we'll stick to 3 uh, so now we should be able to plug this in here and we're on so now I should be able to add in couple of my cells and start charging so the other side of the board is probably going to need a bit more explanation so let's take a little bit more look at that in detail okay so essentially this is just repeated four times. All right, so what we have is we have a max 471 current sensing chip, which we put the uh, battery through, which is our 3.6 volt lithium ion cell. After that, we've got our huge 4.7 ohm 5 watt resistor followed by our FET um, which is connected to our Arduino and then looping back around to the ground so and we also have a so this is a, a digital pin this is digital 3 for example and then analog 0 is connected to the output of this current sensing um, chip and then we also have uh, analog 1 which is connected up here so that we can sense the, the battery voltage. So the basic operation, the Arduino through this currently through the serial interface we tell the Arduino to begin. It turns on this FET which starts to drain our battery through this resistor which gets very hot which is why we've got the big heat sink. Um, as that's draining, the uh, the 471 is sensing the current which is flowing through here, and we read that using the analog to digital converter on A0, and then on the on A1 we also read the voltage at the same time. So every one second we read the current the current. Uh, so read the current from the 471 we multiply that by 0 0.0002 to give us current in milliamp hours so this is one second of a hour to multiply out the current and then add that onto our total current and then if the voltage is less than or equal to 3 volts we stop and at that point we stop the test 
the code is literally two, three or four lines. Most of the code actually involves outputting onto the uh, the serial line. I think it's a good place to stop. Next time, I want to remove the dependence of my computer to monitor the batteries. So I'm thinking of adding on uh, LCD to the Arduino, so we can I can run this without the uh, the computer. And now also because we've got a five volt regulator, uh, for the buck regulator for the the uh, charging side of the circuit, we should be also be able to uh, connect this up to its own power source as well from there, rather than using the uh, 5 volt supply that comes off my computer. As I'm finding that the 5 volt source from the computer is quite variable in its output, which creates some issues with uh, measuring the uh, current and uh, milliamp rating of these batteries. I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.